Over the course of six days, we traveled over 500 miles on one of America's most famous roads, Route 66. As our journey began, we came up with the idea to collect our road trip memories in the form of Polaroids. And not just a couple, we took 66 Polaroids on Route 66. And here's the story behind <laughs> each one of them. There were three Polaroids that honestly kicked off this whole project and they were the ones that we took at the Wigwam Motel. <laughs> After our interesting night of sleep, we took a Polaroid of us in front of the Wigwam and once I saw that Polaroid develop, I knew the nostalgic nature of Route 66 mm -hmm. matched with how Polaroids just naturally look themselves was a match made in heaven, so I was hooked after these three photos. That same day we went over to the McDonald's Museum and talk about nostalgia being put into one tiny building. Yeah. We stood in front of the McDonald's sign and asked a couple young girls to take our photo for us and it was so funny you could tell they've never taken a Polaroid photo before so we had to tell them where the red button was but I love this photo. It really is just nostalgia in a photo. Up next was one of the coolest roadside attractions on Route 66. We did take a couple detours off Route 66 for some cool attractions, but we'll get to those. But this was Elmer's Bottle Ranch. And after we explored the Bottle Ranch, I took a photo of the sign right as we were walking back to the van. I forgot the flash on, which became a happy accident in this case, because it lit up some of the letters on the sign. I don't know, this is just such a cool one. And really, again, was driving home the point of just embrace the imperfections of Polaroid. You never really know what you're gonna get. That next day, we did venture off of Route 66 for one goal in mind. And on the way there, we found the original Del Taco site and just the like old vibes of the building and the sign, we had to pull off and take a photo. And I love this one because it's a photo of me and Cliffy. And it's just like one of my favorites in the collection. We call this next Polaroid, are you real YouTubers? <laughs> We were exploring an abandoned water park just off of Route 66 and once we walked in we were walking around and we stumbled across some other people who were exploring the park. It happened to be a father and daughter and we asked them to take our photo in front of the old abandoned water park sign. This is truly one of our favorite photos but as we were exploring we were looking at the old slides and everything and we saw the daughter running across the park and she goes running up to us she's like I have to ask before we leave are you guys real YouTubers? <laughs> this is the first time that has ever happened to us. We certainly don't feel like real YouTubers. We'd love to be but we're not quite there yet with the channel but I don't know that's just a memory I'll never forget and it's associated with this Polaroid so yeah thanks again for taking this this one guys. Once we left the water park we found our way back to Route 66 and we were headed towards the Amboy Crater. One of our goals while we were on this trip was to take more Polaroids of the van, Coco. We know we're not going to own Coco forever so we just wanted to make sure we had photos of her on film so we can have those memories forever. So this first photo is Coco parked in front of the Amboy Crater and it looks like it's parked in front of a big anthill. <laughs> The next photo is we hiked to the top of the Amboy Crater. Talk about one of the windiest experiences I've ever had. Mm -hmm. It literally blew my hat off. But it's I really like this photo because it's kind of abstract. If you don't know what you're looking at, you could kind of make your own story up about what you're looking at. That night, we actually slept in the parking lot of the Amboy Crater. And once it started to get dark out, we were looking around and off in the distance, you could see a neon sign. I really wasn't sure what it was. But once we went out and explored, we realized it was one of the most famous signs on Route 66, which was Roy's Cafe. They've actually restored this sign so the neon is super bright. Mm -hmm. So when we got down there, we had lost the sun. It was definitely getting dusk. So this was our first shot at taking Polaroids at night. The first couple didn't come out perfectly, but as we were walking back to the van, I was walking underneath the sign. I looked up and I thought, mm, I might just take one more before we head back. I pointed the Polaroid up and snapped this photo and it's truly one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Probably gonna say that about 10 times in this video. <laughs> but just the way the colors are against like the blue of the sky, <laughs> chef's kiss. And then the next day as we were heading out of town, we had to stop and take one more Polaroid of the Route 66 sign in the road with that sign in the background. This is just such a cool stop. I'm so glad that we were able to go at night and see it during the day. 
That same day, we drove to Goff Schoolhouse. And while we didn't get the photo of the schoolhouse itself, we did find so many interesting things on the grounds. Yeah. The first thing was a school bus with a bunch of bullet holes in it, but it's one of those like retro school buses. It kind of reminded me of the magic school bus or the school bus in Halloween Town. So we had to get a photo of that. After I took that photo, I turned around and I could not find Cody or the dog. I was like, where are they? And I found them sitting inside of an old rusty truck. And I feel like I we had to take this photo. Cody's dad has restored an old rusty truck in the past. So yeah. there's so many memories correlated to it. So we snapped that and on our way out, we wanted to pull the van under. They had a big sign that said, study the past. And not often does our van fit under <laughs> arches or signs. So we had to grab that as we were headed out. As we continued down Route 66, I would stop anytime anything caught my eye. And that brings us to the next two Polaroids. These were two signs that we saw right alongside the road. The buildings weren't picturesque anymore, but the signs were still there in the conditions, so they certainly looked the part. I just had to take the Polaroids of them. Then we officially made it to Needles, California, which is known as one of the hottest towns. And we can agree, it was boiling there. The first photo we took we call Hidden Cliff <laughs> because we found this like really tall sign and I was like, oh my gosh, what if we put Cliffy up standing up top so he'll be like right where the needle sign is and I don't know the way the shadows hit, you yeah. cannot see him at all. Nope. <laughs> so it's just so funny. It took me so much might to get him up there and push him up and make sure he stayed safely. And after all the work, you can't even see him. <laughs> After that, we found a mural that said Route 66, and we really wanted a photo with all three of us standing in front of it. And this is the first photo that started the conversation between Cody and I of like, imperfection is perfection in this project. And just made it so much more fun to just embrace what we get with the Polaroids instead of trying to shoot per for perfection like we normally do with a big camera and do edits and all that kind of stuff. So it really unlocked something and kind of changed the rest of the trip. The last photo in the little town was a self-timer photo of us sitting on a bench with Cliff and it said needles above us and we just, again, I really wanted to make sure we had plenty of photos of the three of us together, so I'm so glad we got this one. After Needles, California, we continued down Route 66. We did have to get on, onto the highway, but we crossed into Arizona and we immediately took a detour. <laughs> We had heard that there was a bridge that a man had bought from London, like the London in the UK, had disassembled the bridge, shipped it to the US piece by piece, and assembled it here in Arizona. But once it got here and he started putting it up, he realized it wasn't the bridge he thought he had bought, but he went through with the plan anyway. And if you haven't watched our entire Route 66 video, we have a whole deep dive on the history of this. These two Polaroids are of the London Bridge. As we made our way back onto Route 66, we were greeted by some very interesting sights, including statues. So this one is a photo of an alien holding two guns. It's very like wild, wild west meets space. So Cody jumped out of the van and he had to get this one. And I love this one because it's kind of like a silhouette of the statue. So you have to really look at it to understand what you're looking at. Route 66 up into Oatman truly is like the wild, wild west. <laughs> it is a winding road. They didn't really excavate like the hills and mountains. They just kind of put routes 66 beside them and tried to take kind of the path of least resistance so this polaroid was dedicated to coco our van because it crushed all the hills and mm -hmm. curves that route 66 threw at it and it continued to get crazier the road was wild that day but yeah, yeah i love this one getting to see coco and all her glory with the mountains <laughs> in the background she really did good after the winding road, we finally made it to Oatman, and this is something we were both a little excited about. It is, again, like the wild, wild west. <laughs> yeah. It is known to be an old mining town, but that is not what it's famous for. It's famous for its wild burrows. <laughs> And from afar, they are adorable. <laughs> yeah. But as we were traveling, we were hearing these stories about how they're not very friendly with dogs. No. So I was already afraid of them. 
and Cody had the grand idea to get selfies with the wild burros. So I went up, tried to get a selfie, and something that happened was people had food bags that were like a tan color, and it just so happened that my purse was the same exact color and size. <laughs> And so as I leaned in to take this selfie with the wild burro, it tried to eat my purse and it was like pulling on my purse and I'm pulling back yelling, my bag, my bag. <laughs> I was oh. mortified. So I ran away without a photo, but yeah. thank God Cody went in and redeemed us. He got an amazing selfie and I just think this is the funniest photo from the whole trip. <laughs> two jackasses and one <laughs> after oatman we drove one of my favorite stretches of road on route 66 it was called the sidewinder it's 191 turns in the course of eight miles with no guardrails as you literally climb up over a mountain and then down the other side so once we completed all of those turns we saw a sign that essentially said like you conquered the sidewinder so we had to pull over and stage the van so she could have her glory moment of conquering the sidewinder right across the street from the sidewinder sign was cool springs and it was just a little shop and in front of it had a little route 66 sign right on the road so we went in and bought a route 66 root beer <laughs> and job. did some shopping and the photo is of me holding the root beer and once again, we left the flash on on accident. <laughs> so it's a little bright and not perfect, but again, embracing the imperfections. Yeah. Up next is neon sign night. <laughs> this was such a cool memory. We ended up after a long day of driving, made it to Kingman, Arizona, which is full of neon signs. We were staying at the Cracker Barrel and we got there a little bit early. We were waiting for the sun to go down. We honestly almost fell asleep, but we got up, we pushed ourselves and got out there and I'm so glad we did. Mm -hmm. This was so much fun trying to shoot neon signs at night and it produced some really, really cool dark photos. And one of our favorites was the Kingman is for lovers sign. Yeah. It was one of the newer neon signs and you could tell because the colors are so vibrant, but yeah, it was just one of the coolest neon signs that we saw along the trip. And I just love the colors in that Polaroid. And while we were in Kingman, we were blessed with a Starbucks. Mm -hmm. So we drove up to the Starbucks like any normal day and we pulled up to the most interesting vehicle we've ever seen yeah. in our lives. The first thing I saw was like a bright orange horse as we were rounding the corner. And I'm like, babe, there's something weird in the parking lot. Yep. We have to go there. So Cody found a spot right next to the horse. I ran in, grabbed our coffee pickup order, and I came out and Cody's having a conversation with the man who created this car. And Cody got him to lean up against the front of his car and got a photo of him with his master creation. <laughs> so after our encounter with the horse car, we got back on Route 66. And as we were driving down, I saw a motel sign that I knew I had to take a photo of. It was called Arcadia Lodge. And <laughs> it's funny because a lot of people pronounce Acadia National Park, which is where we got married in 2020, Arcadia. So when I saw that, I had to stop the van, jump out and snap this Polaroid. Before we left Kingman, there was one more photo we really wanted to get, and that was an arch that just said Kingman, Arizona on it. And this is the first time in the road trip I got a little annoyed with Cody. <laughs> so he got out of the van and he was literally laying in the middle of the road, like on the yellow line, trying to get a photo of the van. <laughs> we lined it up so perfectly. I was driving through and for some reason, I don't know if it was user error or camera error, the photo didn't take. No, I didn't turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> So I had to turn around and we were like bickering at each other on the walkie talkies, but we tried again and we got it. And this photo is just like, it captures that memory for us so perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> As we were driving down Route 66, we spotted a really cool sign and a bunch of cool things outside of this kind of general store, this gift shop. So we had to pull in and this was the home of, I can never say this correctly, the Gigantus Hedicus. <laughs> 
And so once we pulled over, this was like kind of an iconic uh, stop on Route 66. So we took a photo with the Gigantus Hedicus and they had Lady 66 is what I called it. A statue that I had Jill step in front of and do the same thing. I love the way this photo looks. I think it's just so representative <laughs> of our trip and just like stopping and going into like these quirky places and just embracing all of it. So yeah, once we got a couple of photos there, we continued down Route 66. Then we made it to the Hackberry General Store and some of these photos are my favorite just because this store has so much nostalgia tied to it. The first photo is of Cliffy sitting in a little chair in front of the store and it really is like a Where's Waldo moment. You have to look for him to find him. But unlike the needles photo, you can see him. <laughs> After that, we made it inside and there was this old diner set up. So we set up a timer. We sat on the little diner stools and cheers a bottle of Coca-Cola. And I just love it. The, the lighting isn't perfect, no. but it's just such a cool like memory. There was also a Route 66 sign in there that we snapped a photo of and on our way out we found a garage and Cody grew up tinkering in garages with his dad so it was just something we really wanted to tie back to home and have a photo of. As we continued down Route 66, I had this old sign pinned on my map. It was one that I was really excited to shoot, and this ended up turning out to be one of the biggest kind of failures in my eyes of the sign. It was the Frontier Motel. It was a super cool sign, but I ended up shooting into the sun, so it was kind of washed out, a little bit dark, but still really cool. But across the street, there was an old mm -hmm. gas station that the van fit underneath, and as Jill drove the van in, it went across like one of the old bell systems so i don't know it's just so nostalgic i love the way this photo came out then we made it to the grand canyon cavern and these are some of my favorite photos because of the colors mm. their sign really reminds me of like the waffle house <laughs> sign it's really really bright yellow and up against the bright blue skies i just loved the way this photo turned out yeah after that, I told Cody I really wanted like a lovey-dovey photo of us to have. Just something to show our kids and grandkids. So we found an old fence and we leaned up against it and I just, I don't know, this might be my favorite photo. You've said that like 10 times. <laughs> I know. <laughs> After that, we made it into the town of Seligman, and once we pulled in, there was a massive Route 66 sign, so we had to run up and get a Polaroid of us standing in front of it. Jill also wanted to capture it on video, so she set the camera on top of a concrete block that was rounded. So we set the cell time where we ran up to the sign, we took the photo, as we took it, a wind gust came up, and it blew our very expensive camera and lens off the top. It ended up corrupting what we thought was the whole memory card we thought we were going to lose like a day and a half of footage but we only lost that clip luckily the camera was fine we did lose some audio after that but anyway we call that photo the great fall <laughs> So after that little dilemma, we continued into the town of Seligman, taking Polaroids of the neon signs there. And there were two very historic buildings. There were two brothers that owned businesses in Seligman, and they were the ones that really brought Route 66 back to a tourist destination. So we had to capture those two buildings and we ended the night taking a photo of the Route 66 hotel sign. Mm -hmm. This was another modern sign. So the colors were so nice and bright up against the black sky. Yeah, just loved it. After Seligman, we had six photos left to take and we didn't have that much of traveling <laughs> left. So I knew that we would be stopping a lot if we saw any cool signs and we didn't make it one mile out nope. of the town <laughs> until we saw a cool sign with Betty Boop. And I don't know, Betty Boop is just like nostalgic in itself. Yeah. So we pulled off, Cody took a photo and one of my favorite things about this photo is the way the colors tie together from Betty Boop and there was like a cherry blossom tree mm. that you can see in the corner and I just love the way the colors tie together. Happy accident. Yeah. As we worked our way towards Williams, Arizona, we stopped in a really small town called Ash Fork. There wasn't much there, but there was a car on a roof that I had seen a photo of. So we were trying to find that, but we came across an old bar that had a neon sign that was straight up. I really wanted to take a good Polaroid of that. Again, I shot into the sun because it was the better side of the sign. The other side was kind of washed out. Didn't come out how I wanted to, but that's embracing imperfection of Polaroid. And I did capture the car on top of the roof, which is pretty cool. There was a, a sign that said, 
no trespassing. I own a shotgun and a backhoe, so I didn't get too close to that building, but we captured it anyway. <laughs> then we made it to Williams, Arizona. The first thing we did was go into a shop. Cody really wanted a shirt or a sweatshirt that said, get your kicks on Route 66. And we hadn't found one the whole trip. So this <laughs> yeah. was kind of our last go at it. Found a sweatshirt and a couple other things and accidentally spent $90 in there. No way. So after that, we did some window shopping. Yeah. We didn't go get lunch. We didn't nope. do anything else, but we found a few really cool signs. The first one was the turquoise teepee. And then there was a Route 66 um, restaurant and the way the red umbrellas and the red sign tied all together. I just love the colors in this one. Then we made it to Flagstaff, Arizona. This certainly isn't where Route 66 ends, but it was where we were jumping off Route 66. So this was our second to last shot. I'll never forget that heavy feeling of really not wanting that road trip to be over. But yeah, once we got into Flagstaff, I saw that hotel sign kind of up above everything else. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wanted to capture a Polaroid of that. Then we officially made it to the Flagstaff Visitor Center. We were honestly so sad to be done with this <laughs> yeah. road trip. We had so much fun filming and taking photos, but this last photo just captured the end for us. Yeah. They had the Route 66 sign painted into their parking lot. I just love this one. It ties the whole trip together, a family photo and... <laughs> Yeah. That was the end. That was it. So those were the 66 Polaroids that we took on Route 66 over the course of six days. If you guys made it to this point in the video, we truly appreciate you. We really wanted to share these memories with you, but also have them for ourselves so yeah. we wouldn't forget the stories behind each of these Polaroids because each one was just so different and so special. But thanks for coming along with us, guys. We truly appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Peace.